Welcome again to The Shooter's Roll, extended panel here today. Uh, we're a podcast made by fans for the fans. I'm Dee Swizzle. And joining me to talk ball, first week of the season. I've got T on my left. How you going, T? I'm good. Reg, what's happening? Nothing much. I'm excited to be here. Excited to have excellent. another girl on the panel. Excellent, <laughs> excellent, <basketball>. excellent. <laughs> and Diana, how you yeah. going? I'm pumped. I'm like ready to talk about how much I love Kawhi Leonard. Oh, there we go. Yeah. No bias. And no bias at all. I mean, I love Kawhi. We'll start with Kawhi then. Yeah. Right from the get go. I mean, I've dubbed him the king of LA. Very controversial, I know, because of LeBron James. But for me, I've just, I mean, it's two games in really, or three for them. Um, I feel as though his game is complete. He's now become a facilitator. Mm. That's something he didn't have in Toronto. I mean, his assists have gone to a career high of seven from 3.5 last season. That says a lot. And you just, like, you watch this guy come into a team. He did it in Toronto. He's done it for the Clippers. He just fits in seamlessly, right? Mm. Um, he he makes the team better. He goes to Toronto, they win a championship. He goes to the Clippers, they start winning. Um, and Monty Williams, Phoenix Suns coach, which I'm sure you all knew, I just want to read a quote. He said, I don't know if there's been a player that has improved as much as he has from the start of their NBA career to where he is now. Massive statement. He didn't come in as a franchise player. He surprised everyone. So, as you can tell, I'm Team Kawhi. But yeah, that's you know, I think he is the best player in the league right now. Got to give it off to the Spurs to find the gems. Yep, definitely. And late like, in the draft. Yep. Uh, and then let them go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Buford and Popovich. I mean, that's yeah. one strike against a pretty stellar career for yeah. him. How that was handled was pretty poor. But, I mean, yeah, they, they develop them well there. They play team basketball and, you know, he's a testament to that. So. Did you feel as though when you were watching that first game at Staples, Lakers versus Clippers, that the torch of best player on the planet was passed on from LeBron to Kawhi? I know you're, you're fidgeting in your seat here, T. It's one game. No. <laughs> one game. <laughs> that James has got to be decided by one yes, game. I, no, no, no. I, I really, I, I think, you know, Stephen A. Smith was talking about it the other day. Credit to LeBron. But we've got to remember he's in, what, his 18th season? That's so true. He's in his 18th season. He's going to have to let it go. Like, Kawhi's here. Kawhi's in his peak. He's playing the best basketball of his career. And I think that, you know, no one's taking away what LeBron's done. He's just, you know, father time. Sorry. T? <laughs> T? That's just one game. So, yeah. so, like, we can say the same. I guess the Lakers, the next two games, I guess they're, they're played a bit better this week. Mm. Uh, and then yeah. the Clippers lost to the Suns? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. no, 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 they did, mm. right? But can I just point out in that game... They played horribly and they were still in the game. Because so, of he, you know, he, he, you know he, he, what I mean? And just one game. other point to what you had said before, um, you know, about it being one game. What I noticed was LeBron came out strong and he lost steam because he's older. That was my observation. I think, I, I think it's because the first game he hasn't played for a long time. Yeah. So, so, and he was trying to get uh, AD, uh, like, um, Onto the Lakers, like because he he wanted to buy his words on the off season, mm. just saying that I'm gonna defer the AD, I'm gonna defer the AD, and it, it's a little bit like uh, Golden State when when um, when KD came, and then and then at the beginning of their season they lost a lot of games because um, which what Curry, Stephen Curry was was deferring, mm. like, like trying to get them comfortable. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. why I, I don't take much in the first game. I I see your views, um, but for for some reason this season. Um, one game means a lot. Like it, it, it's it's the impact of it. Last season when you lost one game was nothing, but now it's um, all the hype in the off season and, and all the changes on the rosters. Every, everyone's going to have to every every game, one game, two games, and um, yeah, it's you. I think there is some truth to like him getting older, but but it's about um, they didn't have a point guard. Mm -hmm. like Wonder wasn't available. He played more point. Um, when he plays more point in history, he he he's always a bit uh, passive. So, yeah, it, it is mm. one. It is one game, but um, you know, I definitely agree that it's probably the most exciting season since I've started following in you know, '03. So, yeah, I think some 
credit also has to be given to the rest of the Clippers team, who yeah, their, their, mm. the rest of their team, including the bench, maybe even more so the bench, is scary. Yeah. And they outscored, I don't know the number, but it was ridiculous, like so 60, 60 to so 60 something. You know? So yeah. their, their depth in their bench is what the difference is for me, besides Kawhi, the Kawhi and <laughs> as I call them now. Um, well, I mean, those two factors yeah. put together makes them really mm-hmm. the team to beat mm-hmm. in at least the Western Conference. Definitely. It was like a perfect match. Like they, they had a team that made the playoffs, pushed the Golden State to six games. And then they added the MVP, the yeah, MVP. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. But it's I, crazy. I think it's the rivalry that the you know the NBA needs right now. Kawhi and you know LeBron have managed to avoid each other somewhat, and I think now you know people want that. They're hungry for that, and yeah, really excited. From a numbers point of view, um, we both now have both players now have a three-game sample. Uh, fairly even, I think LeBron's done some hard work to try and even up the numbers in the last two games. Um, Kawhi's averaging 26 points, 6.3 boards and 8 assists. Uh, Two three-pointers a game and just shy of two steals a game. LeBron, 23.3 points, 7.3 rebounds and 10 assists with one steal a game. So it's, it's quite close. It's quite close and it'd be interesting to see how the season develops, how if there is going to be a disparity Mm. from a numbers point of view um, and also how load management is going to play a role for both players because both players, if they are, both teams are winning, I'm sure that the coaches will look after their best Mm. come the pointy end of the playoffs. But still early days and I'm really looking forward to both respective players gelling with their team. I think it's been a transition for both. Um, I, I do like what I've seen in Kawhi. He's just taken, um, taken the challenge by the scruff of the neck. It's like he's not the new guy. It's like he's asserted himself as option one. And he doesn't have Paul George. I mean, you know, this is like yeah. he's he's holding his own without you know someone like George who fits again seamlessly into you know any team. And I'm actually scared <laughs> for the other teams when he jumps in there and if he's, you know, fit and all of that. But I also think just one more point is really about the coaching as well. I mean, Doc Rivers, he's elite. Mm-hmm. Vogel for me. I'd, it's Vogel. It's Vogel. 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 Yeah. Um, I don't think that when push comes to shove that he'll be able to outcoach Doc Rivers and that's another difference for me. That's experience. Yeah. But you, you never know. I mean, Jason Kidd's by Vogel's side. I think Jason Kidd could. I mean, who's by yeah. who's by Doc's side? <laughs> there you go. Yes. Uh, he's a Tonga. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who Tonga should Luke be Kemp coaching, Kemp. in my opinion. But anyway, Lakers, yeah. listen, he should be coaching. Yeah. Yeah. LeBron inside out. Yeah. <laughs> I just, yeah. And I, I know you talk numbers, but, you know, sometimes the numbers don't reveal everything, I believe, in my opinion. But, it's a good point. Yeah. To you, Reg. Okay, I wanted to talk about the phenomenon that is Zion Williamson. The phenomenon. Who has not even yeah. stepped onto <laughs> yeah. the NBA court, but has uh, dominated headlines, Manisa. has dominated podcasts, <laughs> yeah. has dominated social media. It's all everyone's talking about because this guy is touted to be the next LeBron James or Kawhi Leonard, <laughs> whoever the king whoever is. The next gen. Whoever yeah. the king is. Yeah. Um, and he hasn't even stepped foot onto the court yet. Um, so this guy, um, before the season starts, um, gets diagnosed with a right knee lateral meniscus tear, has surgery, is out for six to eight weeks. Um, now, the questions are, um, what effect is that going to have on um, him and his career in the long term and whether he's going to live up to the potential that everyone has uh, placed on him and what it means for the Pels. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, he, everyone's been talking about the about what could have caused the injuries and what changes need to be made. So um, really look, looking at his um, college highlight reel and um, his short-lived summer league highlight reel, mm-hmm. um, there needs to be some changes. Um, the f- most obvious thing is his his weight issues because he's yeah. a big guy who is super, super athletic, um, but he's just he's playing like a guy who isn't carrying as much weight as he does. And that's putting him at more risk. Um, so if he wants 
to be back on the court ASAP um, and give the Pels a chance to compete for the playoffs, then he needs to make some serious changes. I think I read somewhere it was three injuries in eight months mm -hmm. to his knees yeah. uh, or to his knee. Um, and I mean, his shoe exploded, did it not? Yeah. I mean, that was, you know, the video that went viral. And I mean, for me, they're just going to have to really manage him carefully yeah. if they want any kind of like, if, he, if he's going to make an impact. That's, yeah. It's longevity. You know? the, the way he, he plays and the way he jump stops, very similar to Devo's. And we all know what happened to Devo's yeah. operations, right? Um, yeah, D Rose didn't know how to play any, any other way, so he, he didn't change his style because that that got him into the league, right? Well, I guess with Zion, um, I guess that these are the questions that the the team needs to work, work out. It's really hard to change a player like to, to the way they play. Like as you know, we all play basketball. Mm -hmm. um, if someone came up and said you can't play that way, but that's the way that got you into the league. Mm -hmm. What's he meant to do? Like, yeah. you know, it's it, it's tough, right? So the first thing, like you, you guys mentioned, is uh, lose weight is one thing. But then, is he going to be as effective? Mm -hmm. um, losing weight, lo losing weight takes a lot of energy. Um, I guess fasting and, and um, getting the weight down. But yeah. I mean, they've got access to the best sports scientists in the world. So yeah. I mean, I I believe that there's something that definitely can be done. Um, yeah, and it'd be a shame to see him not reach his full potential. Because that guy watching him on the court, yeah, he's, a a beast. Beast. he's a beast. He's a beast. I just thought Shaq when I saw him the first time, Pretty much, you yeah. know, and when Shaq was at his prime and at a good weight, that guy, you could not stop him, well, Jordan could stop him, but you know, like, you could not stop him. Yeah, no, no, not one-on-one coverage. No, he's a beast. But I really think how they manage this is, um, is going to affect the Pels' chances yeah. of making the playoffs, like at least this season and into the future. He's going to be the difference. Well, the Pels, they're 0-3, mm. but... If you watch their games, they play good. They've they're, been competitive. They've been very competitive um, for an 0-3 team. But you have a look who they play. They play the defending champs yeah. um, in the first game, and yeah. then they had Dallas, yeah. and they lost because Doncic had a killer yeah. fourth quarter. And then they played Houston. So they tough matchups. Yeah. Tough matchups, but they were competitive. And I think that um, brings to the fore... Um, the confidence that Gentry has in his squad. Yeah. They're all providing that little bit to do their job. And if you look at, at those losses, what I think they're really missing is um, experience in those uh, clutch moments to mm -hmm. really seal the win. Um, so I guess it just turns on whether um, players like Zion will have the confidence to step up and, and be that closer yeah. um, or, or not. We touched upon it in our earlier podcast about who's going to come out on top. We all, um, of that team, who's going to be the, the guy for that team. We, we all know that Drew Holiday um, will take on the senior role, but he has to be on the floor. Yeah. But Ingram has looked the goods, yeah. has he not? He has. Uh, he, uh, I know it's a small a sample season, space, guys. but for three games, he doesn't look like he's, he's missed the beat. Yeah. And I'm, I'm surprised. I'm, I could put up my hand. I'm the first one to put up my hand and say, shit. <laughs> That's that was surprising, yeah. um, and they're real good numbers too. Yeah, yeah. I think he's taking, he's making the most of his opportunity. Yeah, it's like they lost their main man, and he's putting his hand up, saying, "I can carry it." So, yeah. and he doesn't have LeBron you know, on his team, so it, it, it's all him now. He doesn't have to think about think twice. He might get traded. <laughs> might get beat out of city. <laughs> so he just has to play basketball. Yeah, and and he, he's playing a bit like KD. It's just, just his style in terms of fadeaway jumpers and shooting over people mm -hmm. and using his height. So it's, it's, it's uh, yeah. There's some nice pieces there at the Pels at the moment. JJ didn't have a good shooting game in the last game, but Josh Hart has been playing well. Um, all the pieces, they, they seem like they're playing as a team. And mm -hmm. the surprising thing for me is they're playing as a team um, so early on in the piece. And the, that all the signs point it looks to positive. Like having fun. Yeah. There's no pressure on them. They're having fun. They're just enjoying running around and being on the court together, mm. which is always good to see. Can I ask, without, you know, Zion, do you think they're going to make the playoffs? I mean, this is a gen like a legitimate question. Without Zion? Yeah. No. I'm a no. Yeah. No, because although they play well, if you want to look at more victories, they haven't won any games. Mm. Like, they're, all the games are close, mm. but uh, the other team, superstars, came through. 
Yeah. yeah that, 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 that's the difference. Yeah. So. And it's a stacked quest, mm. which we've covered previously. Um, so you need even sort of even the eighth place yeah. is going to be hard to, exactly. to get. Mm. Um, at the at this point now, I'm a I'm a no. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. It. Oh, definitely no yeah. from me. I just always keen to hear what people think about some people say yes, um, but yeah, I'm definitely on the no. T. Yep. First week observations. First week, um, yeah, a lot of players uh, playing out of their, their skins. Uh, it's yeah. like they they train the whole off season. Uh, to fall for this moment, mm -hmm. and and uh, this moments come, and yeah, you basically get a lot of uh, superstars getting the points, um, and then you get um, James Harden. He's, um, he's missing a lot of shots. I think he's yeah, he's failing a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I guess I, I'll talk about LeBron because uh, I'm talking about Kawhi. Yeah. <laughs> come back. <laughs> so yeah, so first game, um, I think he struggled, um, and I think that was calculated. Uh, he, he tried to get his teammates involved to see what he had. Um, I saw in the Jazz game that he was a bit more assertive. Um, he kind of understand the game more and he understood his fitness a bit better. He kind of timed it uh, when he was going to attack, when he's going to pass. And, and today, game three, um, he's pretty much the one we're used to. Like he's pretty much doing everything. Um, so on the Lakers side, they, they're not using him on the ball as much as the first game. That's a, that's a mistake they, they were doing. Uh, if you think about his whole career, his whole career, he hasn't been the, the point he's been point forward, so he brings up the ball sometimes. Sometimes doesn't bring out the ball, but uh, they they should use that formula. So then he, he does get passive, yeah, passive on offense, and just defer the AD. Uh, yeah, so I I look forward to the next time we play the Clippers. And ho hopefully they both inform, and then Paul George is back, and then you can see uh, you can yeah. see uh, all, all the guys from Indy come back. Yeah, and then it'll be exciting, right? George yeah. is back November. Yeah, like, counting down the days. Imagine like a conference final with LA versus LA. Like, so it would be nuts. I just think that any team with Kawhi on it, you just, you, you just can't beat him. But, yeah. That could happen one day too with the Knicks and the Nets. But, uh, it could. It could. Day. RJ's been playing well. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just dropped his name. Oh, um, now, we're talking about elite players. For me, there's. there's there's one guy who's led his team to three and zero. Carl Anthony Towns has been going to town. Um, <laughs> now that um, Jimmy's gone, it's Cats asserted himself as the player. Um, not a bad first week. Thirty-two points a game, thirteen point three rebounds, five assists, three steals, two blocks. Number one player at the moment. Kawhi fan, LeBron fan. I mean, I, you know where <laughs> I, I, I mean. I, I'm, I, I like the numbers and I think um, as, and I like the wins. 3 no, mind you, they haven't played the creme of the crop yet, mm. um, playing Brooklyn, Charlotte mm -hmm. and Miami. But I like what I'm seeing. Yep. Um, early candidate for MVP, as are my two <laughs> next, the, the two guys I'm going to talk about next is Luka Doncic. Yeah. Sophomore Supremos, sophomore superstars, and Trey Young. Two, what a week for both of them. The Iceman, Trey Young. It's cold. Yeah. It's cold. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm blown away by yeah. the numbers. I'm speechless. It's like what not well, um, for Trey, um, unheard of numbers averaging 38 and a half yeah. a game. Um, to go with seven boards and nine assists and one and a half steals. And a few um, push-ups. Push yeah. But he knows how to be a killer and he knows how to put teams to the sword and hitting the big shots. And Stephen Curry 2.0? Yeah. Is it just me? No, I, I've got that as a <laughs> talking point. Like, you know, the comparisons. He, I was just watching. Like, he, it's anywhere and everywhere with him. And he's, mm. you know, but... Um, I think you know to be that complete player, his defense is one of them. Uh, uh, but then you got Steph, who's two time MVP, and and he can't play defense. So. Uh, but it's the modern, it's the modern game. I, I'm talking about the modern game. You look out in the black tops and the hardwoods. People want to. People, kids love flashy players, mm. and I, I think with Trey Young and Luka Doncic has had a great first week as well, averaging nearly thirty points a game. 
and 10 boards, got a triple-double the other day against New Orleans, took over the fourth quarter. There's a lot to like about these two players. Um, They're exciting. So exciting to watch. Yeah. They bring back happiness into the game. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um, the, fu- it's the future, yes, isn't it? it yeah. Is. And Trey Young, who... Who was expecting that? I mean, he started slow. Me, it really Me? I called that one. <laughs> you drafted? Did you draft him? I drafted. I drafted both these guys. He in my started fantasy team. slow last season, ended the season on a high, and has just picked up right where not even picked up where he left off. He's taken two more steps yeah. and taken the game by storm so mm-hmm. far. Franchise players, both of them, face of the franchise. Couldn't be happier as long as well as the next guy. I've got a smile on my face when we're talking about this guy. Full bloom, Derek Rose. Ooh. Ooh. I, I, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm hyped. Yeah, he yeah, is, we spoke about it. I want to jump up on this table if I yeah. <laughs> because that guy. I mean, you look at his story. Even last last year against Minnesota when he yeah. cried. I think I watched that video around 500 times and each time I cried because you've got a guy that has so much heart and, and you know, skill and has just been really unlucky yeah. um, when it comes to injuries. So, I mean, when he first went down with the Bulls, that was devastating. And then again, and then again. So to see vintage D Rose makes my heart, like, so full of joy. It's good. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned it before, like, he did. He's basically one of the players that I was looking forward to. Yeah. Like going into Detroit and, and um, Reggie Jackson, he's, he's not for good. <laughs> he should have gone. No. And, and him being out is giving Rose the opportunity to, to end games. Yeah. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they start, start him soon. Yeah. It, like you have a weapon on the bench, you've you got to use him, right? You've got to use him. Yeah. So he, he, he's putting his hand up for, for, for starting. Hopefully he can make the all star team this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's basically a comeback story. Come back yeah. for sure, and yes. let's just pray he stays healthy. Oh my and, goodness! Just yeah, stays healthy. Yeah, he can keep it up. Yeah, I I've seen his game now. He's not as aggressive when he when he lands when he mm-hmm. lands like the j- jump stop with the knee. Like he's playing a bit smarter. He's using his body Smart. more. He's smarter. He's yes. age, age now. Before he was just all speed and agility, and and he, and he just blew for people and dunked on people. And I and I think as well we need to acknowledge that it's a mental thing when you're injured that many times. Mm-hmm. There's fear. Right, because you know, one wrong step, and you know, there goes the knee. So I think that he's finally at a place where he's, you know, comfortable with it, and he's playing vintage D Rose because, yeah, it's a mental thing, I believe, as much as it is physical. Because if you injure yourself that many times, you're gonna think, shit, it's gonna happen again. But he's in a good place, and you know, everyone will come watch that he doesn't get injured again. Because I want it, I want this to continue. Like, you know, the MVP chance for D-Rose. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, that was lovely. I was still early in the season, so you don't know if it's a little, I don't know, condescending, but gosh, he's been playing well. And, you know, beyond the numbers, beyond his 25 points, beyond his five assists, he's just efficient when he's he's on the court. Mm -hmm. And you you touched on it. I think he's he's just a smarter player now, more mature player. And being in... Detroit, he'll have some opportunity there. They've got to manage his minutes, though. Mm-hmm. I think that's the concern um, coming out of Detroit is, you know, they do. I mean, he's playing well. You want to play guys yeah. who are playing well more minutes. But I think they've got to be conscious of that it is D. Rose. Yeah. And, um, look, there's the cub is pretty bare there at the moment. No Griffin. Yeah. Canard's just coming back, mm-hmm. too. And... There's not, there's not much. Jackson's, I don't know how long Jackson might be out for with his back issue, mm-hmm. but it's not looking good there. But all props to D Rose. It's yep. time to shine, yeah. I reckon. Let's keep it rolling. So. Yeah. yeah. Final thoughts? It's been a, an amazing first week. Yeah. It's been explosive. Everyone's um, surprised everyone and... I'm excited for the rest of the season. Me too. Can't wait to talk ball again. Yes. It was good. Um, and and if you, you followed our, our post on Facebook, um, SBS is running uh, the games now on every Saturday and Sunday. I yeah. heard. So, so it's, it's letting the game be available to everyone. So, yeah, we'll basically start um, live streaming um, the games. And if anyone wants to chat, jump online, talk. Opportunities there to chat to us. And we're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. 
We're also on YouTube and you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts as well as on Spotify. Well, for the shooter's role, thank you for joining us in this episode and we will catch you next time. Go cool.